Okay, now we're going to talk about average rate of change. Now, if we go way back to chapter 2.1, <clears throat> the average rate of change of a function uh, f from a to b is calculated as f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. <clears throat> so, for example, if we go back to our previous fun uh, thing we looked at with the uh, sea level, that was our function. So, if we would plug in our f of b, which uh, was going to be uh, 310 when we hit to that, minus the g of 290 divided by 310 minus 290, it's on average a uh, rate of changing 2.3 millimeters per year. <clears throat> okay. So how does this average rate of change look for what we're looking at now? Well, we can keep it as what we just did, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Or, <clears throat> now note there's an error in a book. This should be a, this should be b. But basically, we're taking the antiderivative of the uh, f prime, our rate of change function, <clears throat> divided by the b minus a. And so when we take the antiderivative of that, we're going to get back f of x and plus the c. But if we have specific a's and b's, this is going to be f of x or f of x going from b to a, uh, you know, and over b minus a. And that's what we get back out. So this takes us back to this. And so both of those are kind of interchangeable. So looking at this example, the growth rate of the population of South Carolina between 1790 and 2000 can be modeled as p prime of t where T is the number of years since 1790. Now, the population of South Carolina in 1990, which is, what, 200 years later, uh, was 3,400, 3, 4, 8, 6, 000 people. Okay, so what was the average rate of change in the population from 1995 to 2000? Well, <clears throat> that's going to be uh, basically, what, 205 to 210, and we're taking the integral of our P prime of T, so 205 to 210 of P prime of T, and that's going to be divided by the 210 minus 205, and if we plug all that in our calculator, we should get about 35.8, and remember, when we have 1,000 people, per year, and, and that's our uh, uh, value there, that's going to end up canceling everything out, and all it's going to be those years cancel, and we're going to get just thousands of people. Now, the part B says, what was the average <clears throat> size of the population in that time period? Well, then what we have to do is we have to, again, first take our uh, antiderivative of the P prime to get us the actual population size. And so when we do that, we get this. So remember, if you take this and take the integral of that, that's going to be 0.18t squared divided by 2. 8.18 divided by 2 is that 0.09. And then we have add an x to that one and then plus c. And we know the specific year. <clears throat> it said that it was uh, 1990 and 3486,000 people. So we plug that into this equation. We put 3486 equal to 0.09 to 200 squared minus 1.57 to times the 200. <clears throat> and we end up with 200,000 as our actual value here. Okay. So that was kind of a nice one. And now what we can do with this is to find the average. We're going to take the, the integral of that from uh, whatever we were doing from 1995 to that. So uh, 205 to 210 <clears throat> and divided by 210 minus 205. And we find that where it's 3749,000 people uh, was the average population. Okay, so again, we have to kind of think of what each of these means. The P prime, that's the rate of change. So we have to get the actual, you know, population. So rate of change is people per year. So taking the integral, uh, get rid of the per year, it'll just be people. <clears throat> and then uh, since they gave us a specific year and number, uh, then we plug that in so we can get our actual C value. And then we do our integral from there to get our final average. All right, so when using integrals to find average values, we integrate the function whose output is the quantity to be averaged, okay? So that's a kind of a key point there. <clears throat> now, these are just kind of reiterating everything we've looked at. So our average value is our integral from a to b of f of x dx divided by b minus a, or f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Both of those work. And if we notice that, that's our rate of change here. And <clears throat> so that's going to give us uh, a value. Um, so here we have, oh, wait, wait that's not the f prime. Sorry. That's, that's just f. So when we take that, that's the average value. The rate of change is the one with the f prime. I, I didn't see the prime. So f prime is going to be our average rate of change. <clears throat> and then, or we could have it this way here. So it kind of depends on, again, which version we want to do, because once we take that integral, we get to f and we plug it in, and then we can get our f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay. 
All right, <clears throat> averages in economics is a little bit different. So marginal cost, as we know, the rate of change of cost, is that cost incurred in the production of the next unit when Q units have already been produced, and we want to know that next unit. And so the average cost is a cost incurred on average in the production of any one unit when Q units have been produced. So if C of zero equals zero, the average cost is related to the marginal cost by this formula here. So this, is, again, is our marginal cost. So if we take the integral from zero to B, <clears throat> that number of units, and and divided by B, that's going to give us this value here. So C bar is going to be the average cost of production for B units. And C prime, again, is our marginal cost. So that C bar, we just take the integral of the, the marginal cost divided by B, whatever that B is. So this is an example of that one. <clears throat> so in a certain oil, American oil field, the marginal cost of producing crude oil can be modeled as C prime of Q equals that. Uh, function. And we're supposed to calculate the average cost of production uh, when 16 million barrels are produced. <clears throat> okay, well, 16 million, that's going to be our B. And so we're going to take the integral of this from zero, oops, zero to B of this part here and divided by B. And so if we look at that, zero to 16 divided by the 16 of C prime of Q, <clears throat> we plug that into our calculator, plug all this into it, and we get $20.56 per barrel. Okay. Now, if we plot this original function, that's the quadratic here. This over here, the straight line, that's our average cost per barrel. Okay. <clears throat> now, as second said, locate the points at which the marginal cost is equal to the average cost during the production of 16 million barrels. Well, that means we're going to have to find that intersection point and that intersection point. So if we find those two points, we'll know where that's going to be happening. And we can use our calculator once again. And if we do that, we find it's about 2.37 million barrels over here. And over here, it's going to be about 11.79 million barrels. Okay, So we can use our graph if we actually graphed it and do the intersect uh, point, which is number five on the second trace. Or we could use a numeric solver and, and plug it in that way. And we'll come up with two answers as well. All right, <clears throat> what about sine models? So average values in sine models. So our constant K, so remember we have A, B, C, D, and our last one is a K value. That is going to be referred to as the average or the expected value of the cycle. Now this is the value that the function is expected to take on E <clears throat> if it were not for fluctuations that occur. So if there's fluctuations, you know, that's going to throw it off, but uh, expected to take on if it were not for those fluctuations. So what happens is, for given a model. Here it says a model for the amount of UV radiation received in Auckland, New Zealand is given as that function during the nth, nth month of the year. So what is the expected value if the radiation if fluctuations do not occur? Well, again, that's just that K value. So 32.5 watts per square centimeter. And if we see that, that's what it is. <clears throat> Now we're supposed to calculate the average value for one cycle of this model beginning at m equals one. Well, now you have to remember what is a period. <clears throat> so a period is two pi over the b, or b is this one again, a, b, c, d. So if we, we remember that, that one's the b. So we take two pi divided by this, and we get 12.083, and those are months because it's the mth month. And so we're going to take, an, take the integral from basically it says one, two, well, 1 plus this is going to give us 13.083 of this function dm divided by the 13.083 <clears throat> minus 1. And guess what? We get 32.5 watts per square centimeter. And this is discounting for seasonal fluctuation. The UV radiation in Auckland over a period of one year is expected to be 32.5 watts per square centimeter. So uh, the expected value and average value, notice they came out to be the same. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's stop there and we'll come back for more.